Hi, Wayne Jennings here, and I got a new little action camera I'm going to check out today. This is the Victor AC920. It's a compact little camera that has a touch screen on the back. It'll shoot 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second. It'll do things like time lapse, slow motion, fast motion, and still pictures up to 20 megapixels in size. But the really nice thing about this camera is it comes with this. This is an external plug-in microphone. That means I can get good video and hopefully good audio as well. Let's put it to the test. So before we get to the nuts and bolts of this little camera, let's check out a few scenes I put together that I shot on a recent canoe trip. The Victor AC920 action camera will shoot still photos at resolutions of 5, 8, 10, 14, 16, or up to 20 megapixels. It will record video resolutions of 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second, 2.7K at 30 frames per second, 1080 video at 30, 60, and 120 frames per second and 720 video at 60, 120, and up to 240 frames per second. And audio can be recorded using the built-in microphone or the included plug-in external microphone. All this in a tiny camera weighing in at a mere 2.18 ounces. That's only 62 grams. This camera comes well equipped with all the accessories you see here. In addition to the camera itself, there's a waterproof housing, pressure rated to a depth of 40 meters, that's about 130 feet. There's an extra back door for the housing, but you'll notice this one has these slots in it, so you don't want to be using this underwater, but you can run a strap through there to attach it to a tree branch or something, and it will also allow you to record better audio when the camera is not underwater. You get this snap-on cage that has two tripod sockets and you can attach it to things using this handy belt clip. The camera comes with two of these quick release plates. They have self-adhesive tape on the bottom and one of them has this little metal tripod socket in the middle allowing you to attach it to a tripod. They also come with two extra self-adhesive pads. There's a good selection of mounting hardware included as well. You get two rechargeable lithium-ion batteries, each rated at 1,350 milliamp hours, and a USB cable to charge them with. There's a multi-language user manual and a lens cleaning cloth. To help secure your camera, they've included zip ties, Velcro strips, and a metal cable strap. A simple two-button remote control is also included. And this camera comes with an external plug-in clip-on microphone. The camera itself 
is pretty small and compact, made out of a black plastic kind of material, reminiscent of the early GoPro design cameras. The front is dominated by this wide angle lens and there's a main power button beside it. On the bottom of the camera here, uh, disappointing to see there is no tripod socket. Now this camera does come with this snap-on cage, which snaps on like so, and there is a tripod socket on the bottom. There's also one on the top, and it's nice to see that they're made out of metal, so they're not gonna wear out on you. So if you wanna use it on a regular tripod, you gotta snap that on and take it off, and you're done. Now, the bottom is where the battery is behind this compartment, and unfortunately, it's not the best engineered system. First of all, it's kind of hard to open. You gotta kind of get your fingernail in there and uh, kind of pry it open. There we go. Um, the thing is, it's not attached. You see, it's not hinged, it's not attached. Uh, unfortunately, I think, you know, if you're out in the woods, and you drop that in the forest floor, or if you're out in a, in a rocky beach and you drop that, it's going to be really easy to lose that. So that's kind of unfortunate. I think that should at least have some kind of a hinge holding it on. Uh, on this side, we have two buttons, an up and down button. They're used to help navigate the menu when you're not using the touch screen. There's also a little speaker on the bottom here. Uh, on the top of the camera, there's your uh, main shutter release button there that says OK on it. And beside it is uh, a little LED that glows when you have Wi-Fi and glows when you're recording. On the other end of the camera here, we have our in and out ports. you got your HDMI output, your USB for charging, and of course your micro SD card slot. Uh, unfortunately, there's no uh, cover over there to keep the dust and dirt out. So just be careful about that. Now on the back of the camera, we are dominated by a two inch touch screen. So we'll just hit the front button there and power it on. And it turns on very quickly. And it is a touch screen system. Uh, when you first turn it on, it defaults to the video mode. To get to photo mode, you just swipe from the side and it, uh, you get the little camera icon up there. Swipe it again and you're back to the video mode. Now, depending on what mode you're in, if you swipe up from the bottom, there's like a sub-menu. So you can go in within the, in this case, the video mode, you can go in and change things. You can set it for time-lapse or slow motion or turn the Wi-Fi on or off. And of course, you can do the same in the uh, photo mode. There's also this little gear button here. If you hit that, you get this menu where you can go in and make changes, like, for instance, the video uh, resolution. If you hit that, you get um, various... Uh, settings you can go in and change and you just touch the one you want and set it up. Scroll through, there's different other settings on there, you know, time lapse, uh, wind noise reduction, low light, uh, exposure compensation, image stabilizer. Then there's a sub menu here where you can go in and make a few other changes, turn the sounds on and off, plug in an external microphone, digital effects, distortion, calibration, and things like that. Now, of course, uh, if this camera is not um, in the underwater housing, you know, you can use that touch screen. But when it's in the housing, you, of course, cannot access that. However, you can still change the menu by hitting the button on the front. And uh, it sort of opens up this sub-menu. And you can then select what you want. Hit the top menu. Get in and make your selections that way. And use the up and down buttons to make selections. So it's a pretty user-friendly menu, whether you use the touchscreen or the buttons themselves. This is a little test of the audio quality on the Victor AC920. Now, just to let you know right now, the sound you're hearing is not being recorded on the camera. It's being recorded on this. This is a digital audio recorder with a plug-in microphone. And I use this on all my productions to get good sound. But in a moment, I'm going to stop it and then you hear my sound as the camera picks it up. Then after that, what I'm gonna do is plug this in. You see, this little camera comes with its own external plug-in microphone. So then you can hear how much better it sounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off right now. There, so now this is stopped. 
and what you are hearing is my voice being picked up in the camera. Now, I'm not far away. I'm only at arm's length, and I'm speaking in a normal voice, but I find the audio that camera captures is very, very low, and when I boost it to, to make it sound half decent, you hear this hiss in the background. So I don't really find the camera mic very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in this mic and see if that makes a difference. All right, so what I've done is I've plugged this microphone in. This is the microphone that comes with the camera. As you can see, it's got this cable. It's about a meter and a half long, and uh, it's got a little clip on here if I want to clip it on, but right now I'm just holding it to give you an idea of how much better the sound is when I'm talking into this microphone. The great thing about this is I can even have my back to the camera, so I'm looking over here and I'm talking over here, but you can still hear exactly what I'm saying. So this is a really nice feature to have on a little action camera like this. This camera does a nice job shooting slow motion. This scene was recorded at two times slow motion. This scene was shot at four times slow motion. And when you shoot at eight times slow motion, you can really slow things down. And because it's waterproof, you can get some great underwater shots. This camera will also record a fast motion scene at up to 15 times normal speed. This little action camera has a built-in image stabilizer. Uh, right now, that feature is turned off. I'm just walking down this uneven path, holding the camera in front of me on a selfie stick, shooting at 1080. This just gives you an idea of the type of image you get with no image stabilizer. What I'm gonna do is go back, retrace my steps with the image stabilizer turned on, and we can compare the two. Okay, so I've retraced my steps. I'm walking over the same train, but this time the EIS, that's the electronic image stabilizer, is turned on. So this gives you an idea um, how the camera will smooth out any jitters or bumps. It just gives you a little nicer, more even video when you're doing a handheld shot like this. This camera does a great job producing nice, smooth time-lapse sequences. You can set the camera to record a frame of video every 1, 3, 5, 10, 30, or 60 seconds. Still photos can be captured in sizes up to 20 megapixels. There are also settings for a burst photo mode, a self timer, and there's a long exposure setting allowing you to shoot in low light conditions. Now, this little camera can be used as a dash cam. Even though there isn't a setting on there labeled dash cam, there is a setting called loop recording which will allow you to record video over and over again now the nice thing about this camera is you can if your car is equipped with a usb jack you can plug in a usb cable whether the battery is in this camera or not and it will power it all day long so you can set it up on the dashboard hit the loop function and record video for as long as you want there is a zoom function that allows you to change the field of view in eight different increments however Unlike an optical zoom lens, this electronic magnifier merely softens the image the tighter you zoom. In my opinion, I think this is a bit of a gimmick and I would never personally use this feature as it only tends to degrade the quality of your video. This camera has a built-in distortion correction feature that's turned off right now. A lot of these wide-angle lenses tend to give it a fisheye or distorted look. If you check out the horizon behind me, you'll see that it's kind of high in the middle and curved down on each side. But when we turn the distortion correction on, it should level things out. All right, so I've turned that distortion correction feature on. And as you can see from the horizon behind me, it's pretty straight and level now. The nice thing about this feature is it works both in the photo and the video mode. 
This camera comes with a remote control that you can wear on your wrist like a watch. It's really simple, there's just two buttons. If you push the red button once, the camera will snap a still picture. And if you hit this white button, the camera will begin to record video and it'll keep recording until you hit that button again. Now, if you want to take more control remotely of your camera, it's best to download the app. This way you can see on your phone here exactly what your camera sees and then remotely you can hit this button here and start recording and you'll see exactly what the camera sees. You can also take photos if you hit the button down there. So now you have the still photo come up and you can snap still photos. You can go in and change things like the video resolution, set the white balance, change the megapixel size for the photos. You can also, if you hit this button down here, you can go in and preview and look at all your photos, all your videos that you've taken. You can play them back and you can sort through them. So this is a much better way, it gives you more control over the camera. So in conclusion, the Victor AC920 is a pretty good little camera. It's not a great camera, it has a few flaws. For instance, I'm disappointed it doesn't have a tripod socket on the bottom. Uh, I wish it had an LED on the front so when it's pointing at me, I know it's recording. And I'm really disappointed with the battery cover on the bottom. It's just a little piece of plastic. It should, at the very least, have a hinge on there. I'm just afraid one day it's going to pop off and I'm going to lose it. But as far as the, the quality of the images, I was really pleased, uh, especially at 30 frames per second. That seems to be the sweet spot on this camera, whether it's 1080, 2.7, or 4K. I found 30 frames per second, my images were sharp, uh, crisp, good color saturation, no dropouts, really looked nice. Um, but I found when I boosted that frame rate to like 60 or 120, things started to get a little bit soft. Not like out of focus soft, but to the critical eye, it just wasn't as sharp. So my advice is leave it at 30 frames and everything will look good. And also, having this plug-in microphone means you're going to get good sound as well. I mean, the mic that's in the camera is kind of subpar, but when you plug in this external mic, you get really good sound. So good video deserves good audio. And based on that fact and the price point around $100, this is definitely a camera worth considering.